Good morning everybody, this is Stephen Pugh of uh, the Home Baba College. I want to do another video in my series called Ministerial Integrity. It's a big phrase, isn't it? But we're going to think today about the biblical examples when ministerial integrity fails. When we turn to the pages of scripture, we find many notable examples of very great men of God who fail miserably in their ministry. These Old Testament saints are not saved as Christians are, but they are nevertheless great men of faith in their, in their covenant God. And yet they failed and they failed dramatically. Uh, there are many notable examples that we, but we will begin with Noah. Now Noah was a righteous man in his generation. And God used him to save his family and the world from a flood which destroyed all the peoples of the world. Yet later in his private life and in his family, he had a problem. It seems that he had become overcome by alcohol. Uh, and this would lead to a breakup of his family and curses. And it was a, a glorious beginning and a very sad end. And yet God had done so much through him. When, when the Lord spoke to Ezekiel the prophet, he spoke of the greatness of the prayer life of Noah and of Samuel and of Daniel. Now, at that time, Daniel was only a young man, very, very young man. And that's a great testimony to him. But it's also a great testimony to Noah. We would never know, without that reference, how great the prayer life of Noah was and yet he fell you see he was a man who had feet of clay and the next notable example in scripture is Moses now this great man of God who was previously the prince of Egypt he had a fatal flaw he had a temper and his temper manifested itself early in his life at the age of 40 years of age and he re it re-emerged again at the end of his life when he was very old, in his hundreds, 120 perhaps. Uh, Moses, uh, the, the would-be leader of the children of Israel, when he went to defend one of his people, struck out murderously and killed an Egyptian. He quickly buried the body, but next day he found that it was common knowledge. And so Moses faces execution, and so he fled. And from the age of 40 until he was 80, for 40 years, he lived in total obscurity in the backside of the desert in Midian. All we know of his glorious call we all know of his glorious call to be delivered of his people and we love his leadership on behalf of God and of him leading them through the desert back to Midian and back to Mount Sinai. And of his consistent faithfulness during those 40 years of wandering. What most people don't know is of his failure and of his rebellious anger at the Lord who commanded him to speak to the rock for water to be provided. We don't fully know why, but he took the staff of God and he struck the rock instead. This act of temper brought about the judgment of God and denial to Moses of entrance into the land. It's, it was a very sad end to a very glorious ministry amazing isn't it and then there's others there are other people to think about let's think of samson samson was an exceptional judge a judge of israel over a long and fruitful life he delivered israel from the oppression of the philistines and single-handedly led the children of israel um, um, led the children of Israel to bring the fear of God upon their enemies. However, in getting close enough to the Philistines, Samson foolishly revealed 
his own personal secret and the key to his own downfall. This was in spite of having a number of near misses and in the end they overcame him and they blinded him for the rest of his life. What a tragic end to a glorious ministry. The next man of God I want to think about is Elijah. Elijah led a tremendous spiritual challenge to over 400 prophets of Baal. Imagine one against 400. Who's going to win? And he defeated them all with prayer and the fire of God. And he destroyed the idolatry of Baal and executed the main enemies of God's people. But at the word of a wicked woman, he fled for his life. It's not just that he feared her. This had been a great strain on his spirit. He had lost a lot of sleep and probably had been weakened by fasting. The main point was that this sorry state led to mixed up thoughts about his own relationship with the Lord and of his place in the nation. Elijah had burnout. Elijah failed at the crucial moment. Saul was a great man, tall, strong, loved by the people, beautiful to look at, healthy and strong, but he had fatal flaws. He, did, he often didn't understand the purposes of God and failed to adhere to the strict commandments of the law. He understood men, but he didn't have a heart for God. And when the time came, he made rash vows and planned foolish battles. He made an enemy of his greatest asset, David, and persecuted him mercilessly. Yet God protected David. He was killed in battle because... They were overcome by enemies too great for him. He died like a fool dies. But he brought down Israel in his reign. and Thousands died because of his personal mistakes. In the end, he confessed that he'd played the fool and erred exceedingly. Now, if you're a servant of the Lord, if you're a leader of God's people, this is something that is a very deep and long and salutary lesson. All these great men were eclipsed by the greatness and the foolishness of David. David was an exceedingly great man, taken from the sheepfold and raised up by the Lord to be their greatest warrior. However, in his victories, he became arrogant and fleshly, and he took another man's wife and then murdered the husband to hide his sin. His sin, however, was revealed to Nathan the prophet, who bravely challenged David in his sin, and David suddenly realised his great sin, and he repented and brought disgrace upon himself and on the Lord he served. David paid a huge price in spite of his repentance and the child of his sin perished and David, great as he was, always never forgot the great blot on his character. If ever there was a man of promise, then Solomon was that man. He was raised up to be king of Israel. God gave him exceptional gifts. He had gifts of wisdom, such that God gave him everything that his heart desired and wealth beyond anything anyone else has ever known. Except perhaps for Joseph on behalf of Pharaoh. Kings and great men came from every nation just to see the glory of Solomon. And when the Queen of Sheba came, she confessed that the half had not been told. But Solomon had a fatal flaw. He loved strange women, women from outside of Israel. 
and they brought their religion and their idolatry into the kingdom and into the heart of Solomon. And while he lived, Solomon was safe for David's sake, but at his death, his kingdom was doomed and soon fell into division and defeat. These great men had some blot on their character or some secret wickedness which brought them down. This should teach any leader that no matter how great they might be, no matter how knowledgeable or how intelligent or how handsome or wealthy, they are traps set for men by Satan, which can destroy them and spoil all that God had for them. When we turn to the New Testament, we find that the same thing repeats itself in the lives of the apostles. Peter, the great apostle, often made huge mistakes. He opposed Christ to his face when Christ revealed the path to the cross. He denied the Lord cowardly when confronted by three servants who declared their knowledge of his association with Christ and Christ had to go to extraordinary lengths to restore Peter. Still later, um, after being a great leader in the New Testament church, Peter and Barnabas and others made a nearly fatal mistake of prevaricating when faced with Pharisees who wanted the Jewish Christians to separate from Gentile Christians at meal times. Thankfully, Paul was present and stood up to him face to face and broke the hypocrisy of the whole thing. It must have been hard for Peter to live this down. Perhaps he never did. Barnabas, Paul's most faithful friend at one time, fell out with him and effectively disappeared from the pages of Scripture. And when we read carefully the pages of the New Testament scriptures, we find man after man who fails in ministry and uh, passes into obscurity in disgrace. But we also are heartened by cases of restoration. Mark, who disgraced himself during the first missionary journey of Paul, went off with Barnabas eventually but he eventually is restored to favour and proves useful to Paul and the author of the gospel of his name. So making mistakes, even big mistakes, even though they might cause harm and division, are nevertheless not a life sentence. And God often can bring people back to himself and to his people. At a later time, Paul talks, saying that he disciplines his flesh beating himself black and blue because the flesh is so dangerous that after he has preached to others it's only too possible to disqualify himself from the very ministry that God has called him to. He says, lest I be a castaway. And this causes a chill to run down the spine of every man of God. He doesn't mean a castaway in, in the terms of losing his salvation. That's not what the issue is. It's all about losing his ministry. The one great passion of his life could be lost. It could be lost. And perhaps lost forever. So this is the second um, um, lecture in this uh, in this series and we're, we're trusting this is going to be a blessing to you it's going to be very much a matter of heart searching i'm sure and we look forward to catching up with you next time have a wonderful day bye for now